So today's exercise is to uh, paint a simple little vignette of an old garden shed using pen and wash. Um, nothing too complicated. I'm adding one or two pictures together. I've taken a few uh, photographs from the internet. Um, there's loads of old garden sheds you can find there. Um, there's a couple, there's a, st um, a brick built one with a slate roof, an old door, some lovely flowers around it. Uh, this one here looks like an outside toilet, um, but I'm sure it's just a shed uh, with a corrugated roof. Um, and this one here again, corrugated roof. This one's got um, glass door and windows and so forth. So I'm going to use a combination um, of those. Um, I'm using uh, 425 gram or 200 pound uh, cold pressed uh, Langton watercolour paper in a sketch pad. Um, I'm going to be using Pigma Micron pens to do the pen work plus uh, perhaps a Slamy uh, fountain pen. Um, I like using uh, fountain pens with uh, non-waterproof ink in certain areas because um, I find that when the the uh, washers touch the ink of course it bleeds and you get some lovely um, grey effects. Um, paint wise I'll be using both Winsor & Newton and uh, Daniel Smith uh, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Cobalt Blue, a little bit of Lemon Yellow and Green Appetite Genuine and maybe we'll see some Quinacridone, Sienna and Gold um, as well. Um, so you can see I've already done a quick outline sketch in pencil. I've bought in to play um, an old spade and a, and a bit of wood and a pot or so. I'm going to put a little bit of um, of a shrub uh, on this side here just to balance things out. Stone pathway. Um, but as I say it's a vignette so um, it's not going to be uh, too complicated. Um, and so I'm going to just start doing some of the pen work uh, now. Um, starts with uh, this. This has a little portico type roof um, coming out, so we'll just get that going. Very, very sketchy, nice and rough. There's no need to be too accurate. So this uh, gets it started. I, as I say, um, I'm very, very sketchy when it comes to pen and wash. Um, as long as the lines are in roughly the, the right position, get the perspective right. So here we are, I've got uh, much of the initial pen work in. Um, so we're going to put some sort of small tree type shrub on the left hand side. I don't want that to be too prominent, otherwise it will take away from the, the focal point which is the shed itself. Um, so I'm just going to do that quite lightly. Almost there, as far as the uh, the thin lines are concerned. Um, put in a few plank lines. Between the spade and that bit of stick. Just put in a little bit of uh, detail. Um, same sort of plank lines across the front. Not being very accurate there across the top as well. 
and we've got a corrugated roof so it's fine okay um out of the brick chimney And having done most of that work now with the point 0.1 um, pen, I use my thick and thin line technique. So some of the lines, especially where the, um, you've got an outside edge, I use a thick pen and this is just a graphics technique which helps to emphasize the shape again being really really sketchy That starts to emphasize some of the areas. And make the whole thing that little bit more three dimensional. So in graphics term, the thick and thin line technique is where any line which is attached to just one face only, like that line there, is thick, and any line which is attached to two faces or more is thin. So um, there's a thick line there, but that line there which is attached to that face and that face is left thin, so on. I don't stick religiously to that. Um, it works very well. But you've got to just use your own common sense to um, interpret it and, and use it in a way which simply enhances your your drawing. Fine, that's okay. A bit more bracken, a little bit more. Just emphasise the trunk of that sort of thing there. Won't go any further there. few weeds growing up. I think that's probably enough of that. Now I do, as I say, use a Lamy fountain pen, or any fountain pen, with non-waterproof ink. Um, just before I do that I'm going to just rub out one or two little pencil lines. And then um, just one or two of these lines um, I'm going to go over with the fountain pen so that when the watercolour washes touch those lines um, they will bleed and you'll get this lovely warm grey uh, effect especially under where you've got overhanging um, shapes, so under, underneath window ledges and that sort of thing. But not too much. If you do too much, you'll have too much ink flowing and um, you'll end up with a grey mess. Okay, that's enough of that I think. Right, now we can start thinking about um, painting. Um, First thing to do is to decide um, where your light's coming from. And I'm going to have the light coming from the left hand side here, which means that the right hand side for the shed is going to be um, in shade, in dark. Um, I'm going to start with the, um, the roof, and it's going to be a rusty old corrugated roof. Um, and so I'm just going to 
start with a bit of burnt sienna. This paper, this cold press paper, has a nice tooth to it. In other words, it's slightly rough, which means that um, if you brush over that as I'm doing at the moment, you can get these little areas where the paint doesn't go. And that's quite nice. You get a sort of little speckledy uh, view. So there's burnt sienna. I'm going to put a little bit of co uh, cobalt blue into that. Just darken it here and there. A little bit too much. Leaving a certain amount of white. Okay. Some nice red brickwork here on this chimney. Turn that down a little bit. And the dark side of that chimney is going to be to the right. So I'll make that a little bit darker. A bit of cobalt too. The thing to do thing as you can see is I'm, I work quickly, I don't um, hang about. Um, I like to keep the thing nice and sketchy. And I like working wet into wet so the I didn't mention previously was Naples Yellow which I've used on the chimney there. Um, and then darkened it up straight away. Um, I'm going to start off with some raw sienna on the front. Can you see how that ink has immediately bled just there? And you get this lovely, lovely soft, warm, grey, shadowy effect. Leaving areas of just, in other words, being sketchy and leaving areas of white, be a shadow underneath that um, portico in a minute. Um, there you are, looks bleeding again now, which is great. It's fine, I mean, it's just a sketch, it's just, um, don't have to be too accurate, just be quick. Uh, there'll be a dark area underneath there. That'll be a rusty piece of work there as well, just okay. and then this side of the um, the shed is going to be darker. This is Windsor Newton burnt sienna, just lovely. Sorry, burnt umber. Just lovely. I like I like both. Windsor Newton I find are very good with their earth colours. So the burnt siennas, the burnt umbers, and so forth. Um, yellow ochre and uh, raw sienna. Very good. Much better than many other um, manufacturers. Um, so there we go, it's beginning to uh, take on that sort of rough um, rough and ready look. Um, I'll come back to the spade and so forth, a little bit of detail in there later on. This sort of stone pathway, I'm going to use a little bit of Naples yellow to get that going. Getting plenty of white. Um, and then we want some dirt. So. Got a nice sort of tub for flowers just here. That will 
in shadow a bit, so just pop in another burnt humper there, that's all right. Just mess it up a little bit. Um, I think this framework for this window, uh, this door and window, I'm going to leave very much um, white, I think. I don't, uh, I want to retain as much white as possible. I want to, to, to otherwise you, if you don't do that, you tend to shut the painting down a bit. Um, so I'm going to um, just do a little bit of work in the windows. Um, and for that I tend to use a blue and a bit of brown and a, and, uh, a bit of red perhaps to give myself a, a bluey grey or it just goes straight to um, a nice dark blue of some sort um, it's a little bit too dark but what I do is I flick it in don't be tempted to um, fill it all in or as I say, you can use a dark blue, uh, a bit like Payne's Grey. Um, that's what I'm using at the moment. Uh, the um, Inside there will there'll be various objects. It could, there could be a bench. It could be um, other tools. Um, and so I'm just going to okay. So. We're fairly well along the way uh, at this point. Um, I think what I might do next is to put in uh, some shadow work. Now for that I tend to use something like um, violet mixed with a bit of burnt umber and mixed with a little bit of cobalt blue to give a sort of a soft warm grey. Um, now, there's a little eave here on this side here, so that'll go right across there. And there'll be a cast shadow um, here, so that's okay. Um, this will cast a shadow in here. So you've got that sort of overhang. Um, where you've got the spade and this rod, there'll be a shadow falling down there too. A little shadow in there, perhaps, at the same time. It's making the thing look convincing. Um, but without going too far, keep it simple. A shadow there and there. Fine, good. Now, it's a little vi vignette. I'm not going to do everything around it, but I'm going to put in a bit of um, greenery and maybe drop in one or two flower heads too. Um, I'm using some lemon yellow at the moment. Why is that still wet? There's this Daniel Smith colour, the Green Appetite Genuine, which um, is, as I say, one of the only greens that I'll use straight from the tube. Um, It's not as bright as some other tube greens, um, which is good. Otherwise, if I don't use that, then I tend to make up a, make up a, a green of some sort. Um, almost tempted to leave this tree shrub thing alone 
actually on the left hand side but I think I might just do a little bit I don't want to I don't want it to detract from the shed itself I just want to indicate that there's something alive just there it's all a question of balance I just had a little bit of lemon yellow in the background there just to bring that down take that over the roof slightly I'm just making it up as I go along to be honest with you and add just a little touch of the green appetite genuine to that wet into wet just let it flow Got to be careful. Um, the greenery will be lighter as it gets further up because it's receiving most light. So let's not go too far up with that. It's okay. Just to balance it out, I might just come down here a little bit. Pick up a few green shapes. Right, so we're approaching finishing this little vignette of the garden shed. Um, just going back again, I often get asked, you know, is it okay to go back and use pen over water, the watercolour washers? Uh, and yes it is, there's no reason why not. Some people do their um, uh, pen and wash or line and wash by doing the washers first and then putting pen on top of that. Um, I tend to do a pencil drawing, then uh, a fair amount of ink, then do the washers, but then come back later on if necessary and just to emphasise one or two of the lines with, um, a little bit more detail work in perhaps um, come back with a little bit more pen at the end of the day there's no no there's no rule about these, these this sort of thing you've just got to use your own imagination um, and go for what looks right uh, to you so there we are we're more or less complete um, it's a little vignette uh, and um, to finish it off um, I'm going to uh, do just a little bit of splatter but also put in a few um, flower heads as well so using a rigger brush just put in some red maybe over here too a little bit and as we learn from Turner um, using a nice bright cad red in places will take the eye of the viewer into the painting so it's a good good technique it just lifts the whole thing up a little bit um, but I will use um, let's say a little bit of splatter um, and that I find gives the painting a bit of movement a bit of excitement about it rather than just being a bog standard painting which is accurate and, and good in itself but just I find very often paintings just need a little bit of life to them so I'm just going to I'm using white gouache at the moment fairly wet and just that'll, that'll as it dries that'll knock back a bit but just to splatter and just break up the painting a wee bit, there we go, that's fine um, my three standard splatter colours white gouache, a bit of pyrrole red I've already used that for some of the um, the flower heads but I'll just use a little bit more there we go. 
that's fine. Good, you get these lovely little effects. Um, very hit and miss. And then I also use a bit of cobalt teal blue as well, which I find quite a nice complementary colour. Again, not too much, just a little drop here and there. Just gives a little bit more. Yeah, quite like that bit there. There. And that, I think, is it more or less finished. Now, just to point out one or two things. Uh, the first is, once you've done your sketch, make sure you decide where your light's coming from. Some people will actually put a pencil line in, to indi arrow in, to, to indicate where it's coming from. Um, the whole idea is to try and give the illusion of a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And therefore, um, you use shadow and light uh, to enable that to happen. And so, having the light coming in from the left-hand side, that means that this, side is, this face is going to be light, this is going to be dark, by having that differentiation between the two faces, you get the three-dimensional look. Um, you could argue that, and I suppose I could add a little bit of that now, that this plant here, whatever it is, will um, perhaps put a little bit of shadow onto that face. Um, so make sure you go for the 3D effect. Um, bit of splatter, be rough, quick and ready, enjoy it, leave bits of white. Why are you doing that? It just breaks things up, it just makes it look sketchy. It looks as though there's a bit of movement there. It comes down to technique at the end of the day. Um, and um, for me, producing something which is alive rather than just flat and dead. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, there are loads of garden shows out there. You've probably got a, a derelict one in your back garden. Uh, go out, draw it, paint it, and have a bit of fun. Thank you for watching.